Hi everyone, this is Anand. In this video, we will see how to create integration of ETL to load CMDB data to CMDB CI ABPL table. Uh, these are the steps. First, we use integration of ETL to load web app uh, servers and databases. We have to install the plugin on SN underscore and Android Studio. Then we set up a data source, we configure IRE, we test it, and then we schedule it. And if you want to enable some properties for detailed logging, this is the link that you have to follow. Uh, now, in this use case, we will only insert data into the individual application uh, CI class uh, without any host information. Uh, so, we will also see how to deactivate those identification or containment rules on the CI classes. And uh, so that we allow uh, loading of data into the APPL table directly. Uh, this is the sample data we are trying to load. So first we will have uh, uh, like these are different classes of data like there is database instance, MSSQL instance, MySQL, Oracle, Oracle and so on and so forth. And then we also have a couple of web servers uh, and then also a website. Now uh, we will in this demo we will see like one or two examples but that should give you an idea in terms of how do you configure the ETL. So let's get started. First, we look at the data source. Uh, There's a simple data source of type uh, Excel, and which I have attached the sample file that I've just shown, which is this one. And it is running on this table called OCMDB ABPL load. So we will do a test for that data. So once that is done, we can look at the loaded data. So you can see that uh, the data has CRM, CR class name, source ID. So this data is populated. Now we'll go to integration hub. You can type ETL as well. Here I'll open the ETL that I've created. So here in this ETL definition, uh, we will first open the basic details. So here I've given it a name, uh, the SCMDP application, and an import set. You can also use this option auto pull a new import set here so you can use that then it pulls the uh, data before it actually goes to next steps so click on save and mark complete uh, next we go to the preview and prepare data so here you can see the data it has uh, uh, extracted from the file so there is a class name there is a class CNA, name data center and source id so we can move on and it's complete. The next step is to do the class mapping. So show the classes which are mapped. Now uh, we are only doing database instance and there is a fallback. So which means uh, if the uh, first we will edit class and here you can see that uh, if the class is uh, in the class name field if the value is db instance then we will select the class as database instance and we are writing a fallback logic saying that if if it does anything else like for example if you see here there are other class values also so if it is any of these other than the database db instance then we want it to go to appl class so here we have written classes application so that's how this is built and once you do that it creates both these uh, classes one is database instance and one is application so we'll do the edit mapping here we map the source native key this is the source id and then timestamp you can use it as empty or if you have any timestamp file in the source file you can map it correlation id is source id uh, source column is cna and similarly we'll do the mapping for uh, uh, 
maybe they will also again source id uh, source column name We will click quickly check uh, CMDB tables to see if there is any data present. Let's try to do a table level query. And here uh, we look for a record with this name. So it is not here. Come back here. Now there is also one more mapping, I will talk about that. So the goal is we want to relate these applications which are loaded into data center uh, class. So think of it like this, there is a data center on which uh, there are some servers on which these applications are installed but we want to skip the application, uh, we want to skip the, the server layer but we want to directly relate uh, the application to data center. So which is where this is coming into picture. So if you click on the edit class, you can see that the class is data center. So this is not a conditional class, which means this gets uh, like processed all the time. And then the mapping, we are using the data center name as the native key and also correlation is data center name and source column is also data center name. Uh, uh, next we go to the relationships. So there we are doing a contains contain by between data center and the uh, uh, classes. So because there are two uh, classes in which we are loading the data, one is just database instance and one is application. So which is where we are relating these two to this. So in the edit relationship, we are saying database instance, a parent is data center, which is database instance, and contains contain by. So let's try to add one more. So we'll say Database instance data center contained by uh, yeah so contains contained by is only one way so which means I cannot put no opposite direction right yeah all right so but that's how this relationship is set up here right data center contains application or application is contained by data center. And that is that let's go back so that is about the configuration so we have uh, first done an import of data to preview it then we have uh, done a preview of data and we have prepared the data so which means if you if you want to add any other transformation logic you can do it in the prepare section and then after that we do the uh, class selection conditional class selection you know and then finally we have add the relationships and once all those are done we will do a test and then we run integration so as part of this step it will try to uh, run the, uh, the IRA and everything and then it will uh, tell you what classes are mapped what relationships are uh, created between the classes and then what new records are created on that uh, so you can see that it has created all these records but as per our logic it has created them in Application class and then there is the data center. So it made one data center for all these applications and then the relationships you can see that it has to all those relationships. Uh, so DC contains this, then DC one contains the next called DP, DC one contains the next called DP, and so on and so forth. So that's how this works. I will mark, go back here and we have an option to retain it or perform rollback. Just close it for now and we will go to CMDB and we check it. So you can see that it made a general DB in this application class. Uh, so let's see if any record got created in this class. Let me check the configuration ones. Wait a little. So 
here. Let it happen. There it was. So if your CI name is same to be CI DB instance, so let's check that. So it matches this. Let me, oh, let me look at the staging table bonds. Before I look at the staging, it's not here. Nah. So this is the requirement. There you have this class mapping. So the TB. Class here. Let me turn it off for now. Save it. Play class one more time. Yeah, this is active, so we should be okay. And here. Test integration, one class mapped. So, what we can do is first we can go and clean up the record. Is here, uh, just this one here, generate TB, and then we will try to yeah, we'll delete it from here. And I'll check the mapping ones to see why is it not loading it. So let's go back here. Uh, this is the exact CA class value. So let's go back here. Look at the data ones. So this is the value, so it should match. Back here. And then here, let me check the mapping again. Now oh, it has to be u underscore class is this and then we will turn the uh, condition back save it then it's condition back and save it uh, yeah now we can try to not complete and then uh, quickly check the relationships because we already have set them up yeah very good so we'll go back here and we'll clean up the data so that we can have a clean load again. Delete them. So once the delete is complete, then we'll run the load again. Alright, so go back here. I will do a test again so this time we should see data going into the right class so you can see there are three classes mapped one should be application data center and database instance so this was not happening before now we fix that so now it's happening here and then you'll also see the relationships there now if you want to look at the error log you can see that here nothing there are no errors so you don't see anything there are no warnings so you don't see anything and then if you see the activity log 
you can see that and there is an option called verbose on and off so if you on the verbose you can see in detail what is happening uh, so you can for example if you want to look at uh, db instance like what happened here you can see that this is the ire payload there's a class name which is data center class and then there's a correlation id all of that uh, the source entry is manual entry this is being set based on the discovery class we have so discovery source we have set up and then the update without downgrade is set to true and next is the class name is db instance and here you can see that uh, uh, the source native case set to be one now the source feed is it is setting it to apex or load source name is manual entry and then again update of the download is to full and then it's telling you that the parent and child records what is parent what is child in the relationship all of that and it also tells you what the relationship type that it is creating uh, and then it is also telling you what is the correlation to which it is setting what is the name of the CI and so on so this is the payload which is actually doing the work in the backend to create this uh, CI data like the CI and the relationships so that is how you can load data into the uh, application table and related to data data center as a uh, parent now let's look at the class manager to see what settings are done so i go to see a class manager and here i will uh, show the appl class so here you can see that under hierarchy i'll go to appl and if you open this you can see the basic info which is fine uh, the identification rules so i made an independent identification rule on the it as application rule and it applies to only application and the child browsers and here i have written it based on correlation id and that's one thing we have done and then similarly uh, I have cleaned up other related entries and uh, levels which came out of the box because my requirement is to uh, only load it applications without any host or containment and then coming to reconciliation rules uh, this also I have cleaned up uh, and then the SSH relationships you can see that they are retained on the box so which means uh, you can see an application uh, there is a service that depends on application and the service run, and application runs and all this uh, host layer right? so that's the like that is that's the configuration change which is done in the class manager to enable uh, a load into the application table uh, without any host information so that's that's the config setup uh, let me recap so the goal is we're trying to load data into appl table uh, appl table uh, using IRE integration uh, ATL and for that I have set up a uh, uh, sort of an ETL which, which does the work right. so, the ATL definition looks like this so first step is to uh, do a name and everything and then set up an application also if needed uh, and next will be to Preview the data and prepare it if needed. So here you just do a preview and prepare, and then after that you will do the class mapping. Here there is also some condition mapping you can do, right? So you can set the target class based on the source fields, and also you can set up a fallback, and then finally you will set up the relationships, which is the last step. Uh, and then after that you can test and then you can uh, schedule it as needed uh, thank you for watching this is Anil